Welcome to this week's program. I'm Shannon Lurkey. Shortly after the shooting of Philando Castile in July, I had the opportunity to talk with Senator Jeff Hayden of Minneapolis about racial tensions with the police. We'd like to start this week's program with that conversation. Welcome, Senator Hayden. Thank you. Following the shooting of Philando Castile, you jointly released a statement with Senator Champion in which you said, and I quote, we know the story of his death all too well. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Well, you know, most of all of my life um, and most of uh, and all of my parents' life, we have heard uh, of stories or witnessed or seen stories in which uh, African-American people um, have been brutalized by the police or uh, have been on the other end of what, uh, for real, either from their perception or for real, this issue of uh, police uh, mis mistreatment or maltreatment. And so um, this story, unfortunately, is not one that's new. I think we've seen it in the news lately, the advent of cell phones and, and camera phones. Uh, other people have been able to see it, but it is something that has been omnipresent uh, in the African-American community for as long as I can remember. Have you personally experienced racial profiling? Uh, yeah, I think I have. Um, there has been a lot of times when I have been, you know, riding in a car um, and get pulled over by the police for no particular apparent reason, mm -hmm. uh, asked a lot of questions, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I answered the questions appropriately um, and was let go, everything uh, was okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to believe that that was uh, just due to um, you know, who I was and where they thought that uh, I, I might be. Or um, after I've heard my father who uh, runs a, has a company in North Minneapolis and uh, he has had to leave his office uh, late at night uh, and has gotten pulled over maybe once or twice mm -hmm. uh, as he was making his uh, way to his suburban house uh, and got pulled over and asked what was he doing in that particular area and he was working. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to cast dispersion over all police officers, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that we would be in denial if we didn't think uh, that uh, African American people or other people of color uh, are often profiled uh, by the police. You know, you also said in that statement, quote, a lack of faith in our justice system is not only understandable, it's warranted. So what would you suggest that the legislature potentially do to address that concern? Well, I think one of the things that we really have to do is uh, get out of denial. Um, we have to really have an authentic conversation about what is happening. We have to uh, help my colleagues understand uh, what my perspective is, what a lot of people that I represent perspective is on this issue um, of justice and what does it mean. Uh, this year we did do some good work uh, on sentencing guidelines and we were able to change some of the sentencing guidelines that have put people that look like me in jail for a very long time for low level crimes. Uh, I think we have just seen here recently the city of Minneapolis is taking another look at um, if they're putting people in jail for warrants for misdemeanors and what does that do and, uh, and how does that fill up the jails and what are the cost of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there are uh, discrepancies in terms of uh, crimes. I think that we saw that with when we had a drug epidemic in the 80s and 90s where there's a disparity depending upon um, the type of drug that you use, yes. right? And so the difference between crack cocaine, mm -hmm. right, and powder cocaine mm -hmm. and that demographically went to one group or another. Mm -hmm. If you're an African American and use crack, you got a much higher sentence and spent more time in jail than if you use powder cocaine. I look at that as an issue of addiction uh, right. and that we should be helping people through treatment. But if we do have a criminal justice solution to it, mm -hmm. uh, it should be equitable. And we found, and it's been documented, that African Americans disproportionately uh, spend more time in jail and get convicted more for the same crimes as our white counterparts. Last session, Senator Scott Dibble introduced two bills. Um, the first would have required increased data collection relating to use of force, profiling, and other practices. Mm -hmm. The second bill would require a special prosecutor in instances of peace officer-initiated use of force. Do you think those two bills should be revived? Do you think that's good policy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when I started the legislature in 08, we had this issue of primary seatbelts, and it allowed law enforcement to stop you 
uh, mm -hmm. if you didn't wear your seatbelt. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, it used to be that they stopped you for something else and the seatbelt was a secondary offense. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the concerns that we had, Senator Champion, was did that give people more opportunity uh, did it give law enforcement more opportunity to stop people of color? Mm -hmm. What we asked for in return, which we didn't get, was really good data collection to prove if this racial profiling is an outlier, a figment of our imagination, or is it true? Mm -hmm. So to collect data, I think, is really important. In almost everything we do in the legislature now, we're asking people to show us the data, mm -hmm. show us the information, so that we can, it helps us to make those decisions. Right, so, so why wouldn't decisions. we do that there, right? right. Um, and so I don't know what the reluctance would be in which to do so. Um, and then in the special prosecutor, I think that we've seen that the record has shown that law enforcement officers up to this point disproportionately, if ever, get charged in these kind of fatal shootings mm -hmm. and these police brutality uh, claims um, that civilly, uh, for instance, in the city that I represent civilly, there's been over $20 million in the last 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. paid out, mm -hmm. but criminally it doesn't align. So we think that maybe, um, and I don't want to disparage our county attorneys, they do well. Um, our grand jury uh, process is a process that works, but it's done in secret. So I think having a special prosecutor that people feel um, is independent of the politics, mm -hmm. uh, independent of some of the bias that may be inherent because people live in this community, I think that that might be helpful in to restore some of the faith that people don't have in the, in the system today. Do you think that increasing the number of minority police officers will help address some of these tensions? I think it does, but I think that it also has to be, um, I think that we, we can't legislate by simple, simple antidotes. Having more people of color involved in, uh, in policing, especially in areas that, that, represent, that they're representing a lot of people of color, mm -hmm. certainly, certainly is going to help. But I think we need to look deep inside of uh, all of us to look at our biases. It's what people are saying, implicit bias training. Mm -hmm. I'll just explain that to Minnesotans to say that we all have some sense of bias. I don't care if it's because we watched the movie or because we had a bad experience or because we simply don't know them. We have some sense of what that person is before we get an opportunity to get to know them. We have to recognize that we have that. We have to right. ingrain that in the training right. process. And then when we sit down and we have to then interact with the public, we do that in a way acknowledging that maybe I think this about that person. I'm going to work on that right. and treat them equally. So. Having more police uh, officers of color is kind of one of the things in the toolbox. Right. But right. the bigger issue is that we really, really have to say that, hey, maybe I don't know these folks. And maybe my perception of them has been brought and has been given to me through outside forces that I wasn't even aware sure. of. Senator Hayden, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.